everyone. Welcome to another video presentation. I'm in my studio this time and not in the field. Once in a while I find inspiration from other sources and well, that's what happened this time. As you're watching this, you're seeing some preliminary line work being laid down and it's very sketchy on purpose. I want it to blend well into the background as I apply watercolors. So this is what I sometimes call my hop, skip and a jump line. It works well for me and it's just a means to an end. For anyone who may want to try this painting on your own at home, you're welcome to do so. Use whatever technique will help you along in your development as an artist as you're trying to get down the initial image to work with. For those who are watching but don't paint, I just hope you uh, see the beauty in what I'm trying to do here. So I'm a subscriber to a YouTube channel called SUVRVing. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you check it out. It's a great little uh, travel channel. I really enjoy watching it. Tristan, I don't know his last name, he made a movie of one of his trips to Southern Oregon. And he featured a certain waterfall on National Creek. Now I was really struck by the beauty of it and mentioned it to him in a comment. I said something like, makes me want to paint it. And his response was, do it. <laughs> so here we are. It's happening before our very eyes and I really hope I do it justice. Light to dark, top to bottom, back to front, and from general to specific. If you've watched any of my past videos, you've heard me say that. I say it in almost every one of them. <laughs> but see if you can watch this process unfold as I go along. These are really just a set of guidelines that I've worked out for myself. As a general rule, it works pretty well. However, there are times when another approach is needed. So we need to remember that most rules are kind of like pirate rules, if you will. The famed Captain Barbosa said, they're more like guidelines, suggestions really. And I think that's not a bad way to look at them. There are times when you may want to break a rule, but make sure it's for a purpose, for a reason. Otherwise, it won't look right. Right now, uh, this is all a basic block in of the colors to build on later in the painting. These marks with my brush are as sketchy as the graphite lines that I initially laid down. The initial passages of paint and white specks that are left behind, they kind of take on a calligraphic quality to them. Some I will leave, some I will cover up with successive layers of paint. Remember that this is drawing, what you see happening here. Even though it's with a brush, the principles of preliminary sketch, capturing angles, measure, measuring proportions, positive negative space relationships, and light and shade. They all add up to the essential skills the artist needs to successfully complete a work of art. Now it needs to be said that what I just shared with you is my little recipe that I've come up with. It's the way that I have labeled key skills for an artist to have and work with. Other people who instruct or give advice or share their skills, they may speak about these things in a different way. This is just my language that I'm sharing with you. 
As I am working along, I am careful to preserve the white of the paper as needed. This is transparent watercolor and consequently I can never go lighter than the white of the paper itself. Even if I were to try and lay white paint over the top of this paper, it would look dull by comparison. And every succeeding layer of paint would only push the scene a little darker, so that's the nature of transparent watercolor. Other mediums that work in a more opaque manner, they operate differently from that, but uh, in this transparent manner, the white of the paper is something the artist needs to preserve. Occasionally, as you're watching this process take place, you'll see me working interchangeably between two brushes. Typically, one is loaded with paint, the other is loaded with water. And what I'm doing is I'm laying down an initial mark or stroke. And then I'm coming in with a brush loaded with water to modify it or push it in a direction I want it to go. Just so that I can make that spot do what I would like it to do. This is a constant process of, of interaction between the artist, the tools of his or her trade, and the work of art that they are making. And constant decisions are being made. It's a kind of like, oh, what can I call it? A, kind of like a conversation, an unspoken one, taking place between the three. So I'm beginning to work with the waterfall itself. So all the white that I've preserved, some of it's going to start getting covered up with a bit of paint. Lay down the paint, put it in place, modify it with the brush. Lay down the paint and modify a little with the brush. Sometimes that brush isn't full of water, sometimes it's dry. And I'm trying to pull it back from where it otherwise would want to go. Well, okay, this is a two-part video series. You'll see the finished watercolor in a second video, but for now, what you're seeing is a very important foundation to build on. I think it's very important to see this part so that you understand just the time and energy and the process that the artist uh, is dealing with as they're making their work of art.
So now I'm beginning to do more than a basic block in of foundation colors and tones. I am starting to bring in a few details, a few hints and suggestions of more of the patterns. There are successive layers of paint going on top of each other. A term for that is glazing. So I'm glazing, I'm glazing down, I'm building down from the lightest lights to the darkest darks that I need in order for the scene to really start coming together. In the second video depicting this painting coming together, you'll see that coming together happen even more. And that's when one can get really excited when that starts to happen. Right now there's still a lot of problem solving going on as I'm working back and forth between my image, my painting, and blocking in those, those uh, colors and tones that help establish what it is. Well, okay, we're coming near the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed this. See you in the next one. Take care.